Okay, welcome back to another video on the Maths channel. It's your teacher, Mr. Lim here. In this video, we're going to go through the 2023 um, Carrying Bar Math Standard 2 trial exam. Um, again, I've never done this before. It's my first time attempting it. So if I make any mistakes, I apologize in advance. All right, let's have a look. What is 0 0.004083 expressed in scientific notation with two significant figures? So in scientific notation, this is 4.083 times 10 to the power of negative 3. But this has four significant figures, so we want two significant figures. So that's 4.1 because of the 8. So that 8 tells us it rounds the 0 up to 1. So 4.1 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Corn flour is sold in four different sized packets. Which is the best buy? So I'm just going to uh, make them all one kilogram. So 7.9 divided by 2 will give us $3.95 per kilo. This one I'll times by 10 to give me $4.50 per kilo. And this one I'll double it as $3.80 per kilo. So this one is the cheapest. A rock is measured to be 0.8 centimeters in length, correct to one decimal place. What is the percentage error in this measurement? So, a reasonable person would say that the next number up is 0.9. Therefore, the precision, we're just going to subtract these two numbers, is 0.1. So the percentage error is half of the precision, 0.1, divided by the measurement, times by 100 to turn it to a percentage. So we've got half of 0.1 over 0.8 and times that by 100, 6.25%. Question four, what is the area of the triangle shown below? So the area of a triangle is, area is equal to half AB sine C, where C is the angle between A and B. Well, here's my A and here's my B, so the angle between them is that angle there. So I need to work, that, work out what that angle is. So there's 180 degrees in the triangle, and minus 47 and 32 to work out the missing angle, 101. So this one here is half times 16 times 18 times sine of 101. One forty one. Which car insurance covers injuries to the driver at fault and to any other people, but does not cover damage to cars or other property? Um, so I'm going to say that this one will be compulsory third party. Okay, because it that covers. Um, other people, but not damage to cars. Joe owns a machine that is initially worth $500,000 and which depreciates at a rate of 18% per year using the declining balance method. How much will it depreciate in the third year? So that means I need to know what the value is in the second year and in the third year and then I can subtract them. So the salvage value after the second year is 500,000 times 1 minus 18% to the power of 2. And the salvage value after the third year is 500,000 times 1 minus 18% to the power of 3. So once I've worked them out, I can just subtract them and they'll give me the answer. So 500,000, 1 minus 18%. To the power of two is three three six two hundred. So that's how much it's worth after two years. Um, I can now turn that into a three two seven five six eight four. So when I subtract these now, it has reduced by sixty thousand five hundred sixteen dollars in the third year alone. 
A homeowner borrows 155000 Interest is charged on the balance owing at a rate of 0.6% per month. A repayment of 1200 is made at the end of each month. What is the balance of the loan after the repayment at the end of the second month? All right. So pays 155000 Sorry, borrows 155000 They are charged interest of 0.6%. And then twelve hundred dollars is made. Let's see what that's equal to. One five four seven thirty. So that's after that's how much we still owe after the first month. But for the second month, we're now going to take this amount. That gets charged interest, and then we make a repayment. Oh, just twelve hundred. So now we can take the answer, multiply it by one plus zero point six percent, and we're going to minus twelve hundred. One five four four five eight thirty eight. Expand and simplify. So here we need to expand the brackets first. So we're, we have 3x squared minus 10xy. Minus 4x times 2y is minus 8xy. Minus 4x times minus 3x is positive 12x squared. So we can see we've got two like terms here. 3 plus 12 is 15x squared. Minus 10 minus 8 is minus 18. So the answer is A. To determine the effectiveness of a training course, students undertook a skill test prior to the course and another test after they completed it. The data collected is displayed in the graphs below. Compared to the prior test, the after test data has which of the following? A higher mean and a smaller standard deviation. That's I would probably say that's true. Because the test after the course, we can see here, has a lower spread. Whereas the other one has a much higher spread. So that means that it will have a smaller standard deviation. We can also see that it has a higher mean, a higher average, because all the scores lie higher compared to this one. So I'm going to say the answer to this one would be A. The following table shows the monthly repayments on a personal loan. The total interest paid on a loan of $10,000 over 20 years at 6% is... Okay, so these are the monthly repayments. So $10,000... 6% is $177. So every month we need to pay $177. So we need to times that by 12 to work out how much we need to pay in a year. And then we need to times that by 20 for the 20 years. That's equal to $42,480. But that's not the interest paid, because the question says the total interest paid. This is how much we paid in total. So this is total paid. We paid $177 every month, 12 months in a year for 20 years. So we've paid $42,480. But because we only borrowed $10,000, we can work out how much interest we paid, which is $32,480C. Question 11. A network graph is shown below. How many edges will the spanning tree of this network have? So, um, a spanning tree will always have one less edge than there are vertices. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. So it will have five edges. Let's just double check this. One, two, three, four, and five, that's enough for it to be a spanning tree.
The new color paint is made using a mixture of red, yellow, and white in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 6. So red to yellow to white is 2 to 3 to 6. If the new paint comes in 2 liter tins, how much yellow paint to the nearest milliliter is needed in each 2 liter tin? How much yellow paint to the nearest milliliter is needed in each 2 liter tin? Oh, okay, alright. So, we can see here that this is a total of 11 parts which is technically 2 litres or 2,000 millilitres. So we just want to work out this number here for yellow. So I need to take my 2,000, I need to divide it by 11, and then I need to times it by just the 3. 2,000 divided by 11 times 3, 545 to the nearest millilitre. Leo boards a plane in London at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, 10th September and flies for 22 hours before arriving in Sydney. Given that Sydney's time zone is 10 hours ahead of London's, so what is the local time when he arrives in Sydney? So uh, let's do S up here. Sydney, London, leaves London Wednesday, 10th. Um, September 6 p.m. We know that there's a 10 hour difference. 10 hours difference. And we want to know what time he arrives in Sydney. So this 6 p.m. That's 1800 hours. So I'm going to put my degrees for hours. Um, and I'm just going to work out what 10 hours ahead of that is. That's 28. That's more than 24 hours. So I'm going to minus 24 hours, that's 4 a.m. So technically, Thursday the 11th at 4 a.m. is the same time when he leaves. We need to now add the 22 hours of flight time. So I'm now going to add 22 hours to that, which is 26 o'clock, which is still... Um, which is more than 24 hours. I'm going to minus 24 hours to give me 2 a.m. the next day. Okay. If you think about it, if we add 24 hours one whole day, it will become Friday 4 a.m. So it needs to be Friday 2 a.m. Friday the 12th. Question 14. Blood alcohol for a female can be estimated using the following BAC formula. Georgie weighs 58 kilograms and had a BAC of 0.08 after drinking for two hours. Approximately how many standard drinks did she have? So BAC of 0.08. We want to work out N, the number of standard drinks. H is 2 for two hours. And her mass is 58. So now I'm just going to multiply these two together to get rid of that fraction. 0 0.08 times 5.5 .5 times 58 is 25.52 is equal to 10n minus 15. Because 7.5 times 2 is 15. I'm now going to add 15 to both sides. So that's going to give me 40.52. And so we can now divide by 10, 4.052, so about four drinks, standard drinks. The line L passes through the points minus one zero P, Q, and R, S. If R is equal to P plus three and S is equal to Q plus nine, what is the equation of the line L? So R is P plus 3. So if this is P, then this is P plus 3. And if this is Q, we said S is Q plus 9. All right, what's the equation of the line L? 
and it passes through the point minus one zero. All right, well, to work out any equation, we need the gradient. So I'm going to work out the gradient. So the gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's call this one x1, y1, and x2, y2. So we'll have s minus, oh, well, not s, we'll use um, s is q plus 9. We'll use q plus 9 minus y1, which is q, over x2, which is r, which is p plus 3, minus x1, which is p. So the q's will cancel, leaving me with just 9. P's will cancel, leaving me with just 3. So the gradient is equal to 9 over 3, which is 3. So I know straight away it's not A or B because those have a gradient of 2. And so now we can use Y minus uh, Y1 is equal to M bracket X minus X1. And I might just use this point here. So that point there is minus 1, 0. So we've got Y minus 0 is equal to 3 bracket x minus minus 1 is plus 1. So y is equal to 3x plus 3c. All right, so that's it for model choice. Let's move on to short answer. On a map of New South Wales, the distance between two heads and bigger is 131 millimeters. The scale of the map is 1 to 10 million. What is the actual distance between Tweed Heads and Bega in kilometers? So we've got 1 to 10 million. We've got 131 millimeters. That's going to be, so we need to times this by 131. So 131 with one, uh, seven zeros. Okay, and that's millimeters. Um, to convert that to kilometers, we need to divide it by 10 to turn it into centimeters, 100 into turn into meters, and then 1,000 to turn it into kilometers. So we've got the 131, seven zeros, divided by 10, divided by 100, and divided by 1,000. Therefore, one three one zero kilometers between Tweed Heads and Beagle. All right. Okay. Cooper is moving out of home into a new unit and needs a, to work out a budget. For washing clothes, he needs to buy a washing machine and clothes dryer and allow for the first two years electricity usage. The washing machine costs 479 and is estimated to use 426 kilowatt hours per year. Clothes dry is 349, 202 kilowatt hours per year. Electricity is charged at 27.799 cents per kilowatt hour. Find the total cost of purchasing the washing machine and clothes dryer and running them for two years. So total cost. We've got the washing machine and the clothes dryer. The altogether, they use 426 kilowatt hours plus 202 kilowatt hours, but we need to times that by how much it costs to run. Now that's in cents. Everything else is in dollars. So I need to convert that to dollars by dividing by 100. So 0 0.2. 7799 and that will tell us the cost of that of running those two machines one thousand and two dollars and fifty eight cents always round to two decimal places when talking about money The bank charges 0.0603% interest per day 
on the amount owing on the credit card. One is the interest charged in three weeks on a balance of $1,500. So the interest charged, we're going to take a $1,500. Because it's um, a credit card, always assume it's compound interest. So it's 1 plus 0.0603% uh, per day, and we want three weeks, so that's 21 days. But then we need to minus it, uh, 1500 to work out the interest charged. 1 plus 0.0603. The interest charge is $19.11. Question 19. Use the cosine rule to find the value of x correct to two decimal places. So cosine rule, um, x is equal to a squared plus b squared minus two lots of a, b, cosine, c. But we need to square root all that. Okay, so remember, x is opposite the angle. Okay, so the side that we're trying to find, we're going to use the angle that's opposite it. It doesn't matter what a and b are. So we've got the square root, 20 squared, 16 squared, minus 2 times 20 times 16 times cosine of 70, 20.91. The number of non-native plants growing on an island is modeled by the equation n is equal to 2000 times 1.025 to the power t, where t is the number of years since the year 2015 when the plants were first observed. What is the annual percentage rate of increase in the number of plants based on this model? So we can see here this 1.025, that's our growth, which can actually be split into 1 plus 0.025. So really we want this as a percentage. So if we times that by 100, that will give us 2.5%. By the end of the year 2030, what is an estimate for the increase in the number of plants growing on the island since 2015? Okay. So let's work out how many there were. 2,000. 1.025 to the power of 15, because there are 15 years between 2030 and 2015. So 2,800. Nine, seven. We'll just round to the nearest whole number because we can't have 0.6 of a plant. So, what is an estimate for the increase in the number of plants? So, I'm going to say, therefore, increased by 2897 minus 2000 is 897 plants. The speed in kilometers per hour of a truck is inversely proportional to the weight it carries. A truck carries a weight of 1600 kilometers and can travel at 80 kilometers per hour. Uh, what is the speed of the truck if the weight is 1250? So inversely proportional, you should be thinking y is equal to k on x. Here we're saying the speed is inversely proportional with the weight. So. It can uh, travel at 80 kilometers hour per hour if the weight is 1600. So that tells us that k is equal to 80 times 1600. 128,000. So now we can see that the velocity or speed is equal to 128,000 divided by 
the weight. So we can answer the question now, what is the speed of the truck if the weight is 1,250? One hundred and two point four kilometers per hour. The parent used Young's formula to calculate the required medication dosage for the child. They found that the child's dosage was one third of the adult's dose. What? How old is the child? All right. Well, let's just make up some numbers. I'm just going to say the dosage is 1, so the adult dosage is 3. So if we have, well, you know what we could do? Now we'll just leave it like that. So if we have 1 is equal to the age of the child times the adult dosage over age of the child plus 12. All right, I'm going to multiply both sides by 8 plus 12. 8 times 3 is 3, 8. I'll subtract A from both sides. I'll divide both sides by 2. So, 6 years old. Charlie earns a gross amount of $900 per week. He then pays union fees of $15 each week, which are tax deductible. Using the tax table above, calculate Charlie's tax payable, including Medicare levy, of 2% of his taxable income. So we need to work out his taxable income. That's his gross income, which is $900, $900 per week. So I'm going to times that by 52. Um, and he pays $15. Okay, so I might just do 900 minus 15. And then I'll times that by 52 to work out his taxable income. So Charlie earns $46,020, which is in this, which is in this tax bracket. So Charlie will be paying this much in tax. So tax payable is 3572 plus 0 0.325, because we need to turn that into dollars. Put your taxable income here minus this number in the table. Six five zero oh, three point five zero. Medicare levy is 2% of taxable income. Again, this is taxable income. So please don't make a careless mistake and don't do 2% of tax payable. It's 2% of taxable income. Which is $920.40. And so, therefore, Total tax payable is he needs to pay that. That's tax payable. He also needs to pay a Medicare levy. So altogether, he needs to pay that plus that. 6503.5 plus the 920.4, 7240, uh, sorry. $7,423.90. Charlie's boss took out $157 each week as PG tax, meaning uh, on behalf of Charlie, his boss has paid his tax already at $157 each week. At the end of the financial year, will Charlie receive a tax refund or will he owe more tax? So he's paid $157. We need to times that by 52. He's paid 8,164. He's only meant to pay 7,423. So he's paid too much. Therefore, we'll receive 
a refund of let's calculate it $740.10. Question 24. A dishwasher has a price of $7.99. Mr. Clean agreed to buy it, making a deposit of $150 and making monthly repayments of $35 over two years. What is the flat rate of interest per annum correct to one decimal place being charged on the balance? So because he paid $150, he only borrowed $649. So I borrowed $649. Question 25. All right. So monthly repayments of $35 over two years. So uh, let's do this. Um, total repayments. $35 per month for two years. Is $840. So the flat rate of interest, flat rate meaning um, simple interest. So when you see flat rate, you should be thinking I is equal to PRN. But because it's rate that we're trying to work out, it's I over PN times 100 to turn it into percentage. So, rate is equal to, well, how much interest was paid? We need to take that 840 and minus the 649. $191 of interest was charged. The principal borrowed is the 649. It was borrowed for two years, and we need to times that by 100. So, 191 over 649 times 2 times 100 is 14.7% per annum, which is quite high. Question 25. The road map shows the roads connecting seven towns. The numbers represent the distances along the roads between the towns in kilometers. By drawing a minimum spanning tree in the space below, calculate the minimum length of pipes required to supply water to all towns if the water pipes can only be laid along the roads. So I'm going to highlight my minimum spanning tree. I'm going to start with the smallest number and then the next smallest is 30. There's another 30 here. There's another 30 here. There's another 30 here, but I won't highlight that because if I do, I'm creating this area which can be colored in or highlighted in, and I don't want that. So I'm not going to highlight that one. There's another 30 here. Okay. No more 30s. There's a 40 here, but again, I'm not going to highlight that because it's going to create this area. So I can highlight this 40, but I won't highlight this one. I also won't highlight that 40. I won't highlight that 50. And I won't highlight that 60. I think that's it. So because there are seven towns, really I only needed to highlight six edges. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. So I'm done with that. So this one, 30, 40, E to C is 30, 20, 30, and 30. Now, there's lots of different um, minimum spanning trees, but they all add up to the same number. So let's see what this will add to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 30, so that's 120. 140 and 120, so that's 180. 180, and I'm assuming this is kilometers. Yes, kilometers. Forty-five percent of the residents in a local community have been administered only one vaccination against the spreading virus, and thirty percent of residents have been administered two vaccinations. 
so that they are fully vaccinated. What is the probability that a randomly chosen resident from the community has not been administered at least one vaccination? So at least one means one or more. So that means they haven't received any. I feel like this might be flawed, this question, because what if they've had three vaccinations, which it doesn't say. So I'm just going to assume that um, the maximum anyone could have is two, no one could have three or more. So if 75% of them have been vaccinated at least once, one or twice, once or twice, then 25% would not have received any vaccination at all. What's the probability that a randomly chosen resident from the community has been administered at least one vaccination? Does that have to be 75%? I don't know if these are too easy or, you know, there's a trick to them. I'm going to assume that it's meant to be simple because it's one mark. If two residents are randomly selected from the community, what's the probability? What's the probability that at least one of them has been administered at least one vaccination? All right, so let me think about this. I'm going to draw a, um, a tree diagram. So I'm going to say 0, 1, or 2. 0, 1, or 2 vaccinations. So 0 was 25%, 1 was 45 and this one was 30%. Okay, so altogether that adds up to 100%. So 25, 45, Okay, so the question says, what's the probability that at least one of them has been administered at least one vaccination? So, if the first person chosen didn't have a vaccination, then the only way for us to have at least one is that and that. All of these will have at least one because this person already has one vaccination. This person will also already have one or they've got two vaccinations, so all of these. So I could work out all of those and then add them together, but I'm not going to do that because that's going to take too much time. Instead, there's only one other possibility, which is this and this, which was not highlighted. <clears throat> so what I could do is I could just do one minus the probability that there was no one. No one has a vaccination. So that's just 1 minus 25% times 25%, <clears throat> which is 0 0.9375. If you want to write that as a, uh, as a um, percentage, you could. That's 93.75%, but I'm just going to leave it as that. The table below shows the present value of a $1 annuity. What would be the present value of $2,000 per month annuity at 1.2% per annum for 25 years with interest compounding monthly? So 1.2% per annum, we want it to be per month. So I'm going to divide 1.2 by 12. Yeah, it's 0.1%. 0.1% is 0.001, so I'm looking at this column. All right, 25 years. We want to know how many months that is. So 25 times 12 is 300 months. 
So I am looking at this. What would be the present value of a $2,000 per month annuity? So present value is equal to the annuity payment times the figure in the table. Hmm. Why does that look too big for me? Is that right? Oh, no, no, I think that's right. I think that's right. $518,141.40. 25 years, $2,000 per month. Yeah, that sounds about right. If we were to just double check, just to see if it makes any logical sense. If I put $2,000 a month away for 25 years, oh, that's $600,000. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay. Thomas borrowed $600,000 to purchase a home. With interest charged at 1.5% per annum compounded monthly, he agrees to repay the loan by making equal monthly payments over a 30-year period. What is the monthly payment correct to the nearest cent? So 1.5% per annum, compound monthly, so we want per month. So I'm going to take my 1.5 and then divide by 12. That's 0 0.125%. That's 0 0.00125. So we know it's this column now. Now this is 30 years. We want to know how many months that is. So 30 times 12, 360 months. So that's the number we're using, 289.7541. So 600,000 is the present value. We want to know the annuity payment, and that we multiply by the figure in the table, 289.7541. So the annuity payment is 600,000 divided by the 289.7541, cents. A 15 meter platform, AB, extends from the top of one side of a building, as shown in the diagram below. Point C at ground level is measured to be at angles of depression 42 and 60 degrees from point A and B respectively. So if I were to draw that from point A, that's 42 degrees, and from point B, that there is 60 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> Calculate the distance from B to C. So what I might do here from B to C, which is this one, I might work out, I don't know if this is the most efficient method, but I might work out what AD is using that blue triangle there. So, oh, no, I can't do that because of that 15. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll work out this. If I can work out, Hmm. 
So that's 15, that's 42, that's 60. Maybe this, we can say that's 18 degrees, that small section there. And that pairs up with the 18 degrees. The x will pair up with this angle here, but we don't have that. Oh, oh, actually, we do. We do have that. That would be 42 degrees because alternate angles are equal on parallel lines. So this down here is 42. Then up there would be 42 as well. So now, hold on a second, let me just fix it. So this up here is 42, which means that this angle here we can also work out, but we don't need. So I could say x over, I can use the sign rule because I've got two sides and two angles. x over sine of 42 will equal to 15 over sine of 18. So x is equal to 15 sine 42 over sine 18, which is equal to 32.48 meters. All right, what's the height of the building correct to the nearest meter? So now that I've done that, I could work out this one, H, the height of the building, using that green triangle there. So I can say, well, sine of 60 degrees will equal to H over X, which is the 32.48. <clears throat> so the height is just 32.48 times sine of 60, which is 28, so to the nearest meter, 28 meters. Vodafone shares were issued with a starting market value of 210. Penny bought 5,150 shares at this price. She has paid two and a half percent brokerage fee and is also required to pay the government stamp duty of fifteen cents for every hundred dollars or part thereof on the purchase price of the shares. So what was the total cost for Penny to buy these shares? Alright, so <clears throat> So the shares two dollars and ten cents each. 5,150 shares, 10,815 dollars, needs to pay a two and a half percent brokerage, That is $270.38 and stamp duty, 15 cents for every $100 or part thereof of the purchase price of the shares. So that's 10,815 divided by 100. <clears throat> Is 108.15 therefore needs to pay 109 parts therefore 109 times the 15 cents okay always have to round up so 109 times 0.15 is $16 dollars and 35 cents therefore total costs it's just all of that added together. One 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 oh one point seven three. Question thirty. 
The graphs below compared the blood pressure of two groups of volunteers in a medical study. The trial group undertook a structured program of exercise and diet, and the control group maintained their previous habits. What is the median of each group? So the median of trial, the median is Q2, which is that there in between the box. So that would be 108, 020468, 108. And for the control, One twenty-nine. Explain why the box and whisker plot gives a better picture of the results of the study than either the range or interquartile range on their own. <coughs> so, range of trial is highest minus lowest 135 minus 102 which is 33 range of control is also 135 minus so it's also 33 okay interquartile range of trial is 116 minus 104 which is 12 and the interquartile range of control 131 minus 119 also 12. so um, when we see, when we compare these, right, we can see that um, it looks like the, it looks like the study had no effect. Okay, it looks like study had no effect. When we compare just range and interquartile range. But it clearly did from the box and whisker plot. Comment on the skewness of the results for the control group. So the control group is down here. So the skewness, we can see here that a lot, 25% of people are here and here, which means 50% of all people are up here. They've got really high blood pressure. That's a lot compared to the rest of this. If it's, these are more spread out. So the more people there are, the higher it is. And the more spread out it is, the lower it is, you can see here that is negatively skewed for the control group. Negatively skewed. The table below shows arm span and height of seven children. Construct a scatter plot of the data given in the table above. So arm spans down here on the x-axis, height is on the y-axis, 136, 142. 138, and 148, 152. Draw a line of best fit on the scatter plot. Okay, make sure you use a ruler. I don't have a ruler on me, but just draw a line of best fit. As long as it looks pretty reasonable, um, that doesn't look good. Uh, 
that's probably better. Classify the direction and strength of the linear association between the height and arm span. Well, we can see direction is positive. And because they lie very close to that line of best fit, I'm going to say strong. Andy has an arm span of 139. Using a line of best fit to estimate his height. Arm span of 139. So arm span's here, 139. So about 144.8. Find Pearson's correlation coefficient and add the corrected four decimal places. So I'm just going to put this into my calculator. So this is bivariate data. So I'm going to press two for stat and two for two variables. 136. Oops. Good, so that's seven children. Okay, press AC. To get all your S's, press Shift and one. Five for regression, and three is pieces correlation coefficient equals 0 0.98. Nine eight one one four decimal places. Determine the equation of the least squares regression line in terms of x and y. So y is equal to a plus bx. Remember that, not ax plus b. So shift one five one equals. So y is equal to twenty three point seven three plus. Shift one five two for B equals zero point eight seven X. Use the least squares regression line to determine the arm span of a two hundred seventy four centimeter giant. So <clears throat> that's the height. We need to work out the arm span. But when we look at this here, X is the arm span, Y is the height. So make sure you're careful. I'm going to replace y with 274. Okay, not x. Right, I'm going to minus 23.73, 250.27. So now I can divide by 0 0.87. 287.67 centimeters. That's the arm span. It's very long. Question 32. A not for profit charity organization raises money for children in Kenya to provide clothes, clean water, food, and school supplies. For the next five years, the organization raises $75,250 every month. If the interest rate is 8% per annum compounded quarterly, what is the future value of the money that they raised? So 8% per annum, we want quarter per quarter. So I need to divide this by 4, 2%. 5 years equals... All right. Now we want it. We want these to be the same uh, units. So we want to know how many quarters there are. Five times four is twenty. So that's twenty quarters. So two percent and twenty is twenty-four point three. What's the future value of the money that they raised? Now, because they raised seventy-five thousand two hundred fifty dollars every month. Every quarter, they raise 301000 So I'm going to say that the future value is going to be 
301,000 per quarter times that 24.3, that figure in the table. Seven three one four three hundred seven million three hundred fourteen thousand three hundred dollars is the future value. They aim to have raised one hundred seventy five million five hundred thousand by the end of thirty years. If the interest rate was ten percent per annum compounded annually, how much would they have to raise monthly to meet their goal? Hmm. So, 10%, 30 years, 164.49. So we've got 187,500,000 is equal to the annuity payment times 164.49. What is that equal to? One one three nine eight eight six point nine two. Um, however, we want to know how much they need to raise monthly because that's every year for the thirty years. So I'm just going to divide that by twelve. So, monthly goal would be 1139886.92 divided by 12. All right, next one. Farmer Nathan wishes to enclose a paddock with an area of six hectares. The graph shows the possible dimensions. Is the curve shown an exponential, a parabola, or a hyperbola? So it's a hyperbola. If the width of the paddock was 100 meters, what was the length? Mm. Oh, I think this is saying in hundreds of meters. So that means that this must be saying 200 meters, 400 meters. So if the width was 100 meters, which is here, what was its length? 600 meters. If the paddock were to be a square, what would be its length? So that tells me here that, ah, so if it's a square, that means they are both equal. So when we look at this one, this two is matched up with the three and this three is matched up with the two. So it has to be halfway between them, 250 meters. Okay, so that tells me that the length the width is 250, the length is 250. Which would cost more to fence? A paddock that was 800 meters wide or one that was 300 meters wide? Justify your answer using the graph and relevant calculations. So if it was 800 meters wide, then What's that? About 80 meters uh, long. Um, 800 meters wide, 80 meters long. Altogether, we need to fence 800 times 2 plus 80 times 2. That's 1,716 meters of fencing. But if it was 300 meters wide, 
and it's 200 meters long. Two hundred meters long. That tells us times two plus two hundred times two, only one thousand meters of fencing. So which one will cost more defense? Therefore, eight hundred meters would cost more defense. Okay, so we're talking about perimeter here, so we've got our rectangular um, paddock. If this one was 800 meters, then this would only be 80, so the perimeter is 800 times 2 plus 80 times 2, which is 1760. If it was 300 here, and this was 200, then we can see here um, the perimeter would be 300 times 2 and 200 times 2. Alrighty, 34. The plan of Mishka's three bedroom house is shown below. All measures are in millimeters. Alright, how many internal hinged doors are there in the house? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight internal ones so i'm not including this one because that's external and same with this one so only eight what is the area of the bedroom what uh, what's the area of bedroom one in square meters so here's bedroom one it's um i'm gonna say that's 3.3 .3 by 3.9 because these are millimeters, we can divide by a thousand to turn them into meters. So 3.3 .3 times 3.9 is 12.87 square meters. Mishka plans to lay carpet tiles in bedroom one. Each tile measures 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. The tiles come in packets of 12, costing $30 per packet. How much will it cost to purchase tiles for this area? So, 12.87. Mm. We take our 12.87. And we divide it by the area of one tile. That, that will tell us how many tiles we need. But because the area is in meters squared and this is in centimeters, I need to convert this into meters. That's 0 0.09. We need 143 tiles. The tile come the tiles come in packets of twelve. So one hundred and forty three divided by twelve is eleven point nine. Therefore we need twelve packets. Okay, we need to buy twelve packets, otherwise it won't be enough. How much will it cost to tile? Therefore twelve times thirty is equal to $360. Okay, that's how much it will cost to purchase tiles for this area. 35. The data on heights of Australian males and females reveals that the mean height of a male is 180 with a standard deviation of 8.5, whereas the mean height of a female is 172 with a standard deviation of 8. If the population of males and females is equal in Australia, what percentage of females are taller than the average male? Assume that the heights follow a normal distribution. Okay. I might do this. So for a male, 180. Actually, let's do it for female because we want to know females more. 172. 
it's got a standard deviation of 8. So 1, 2, 3, 180, 188, 196. What percentage of males, of females, are taller than the average male? So the average male is 180, so all of these are taller. That's 13, well, that's 34%, 13.5, 2.35, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, make sure you memorize those four numbers. So we've got 13 point, oh, well, that's 16%. Okay, when we add these, that's going to be 16%. So 16% of females are taller than the average male. That was three marks. I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. The diagram below shows a radial survey of a farmer's land. Find the bearing of B from P to the nearest degree. B from P. So from north of P in a clockwise direction until it hits B. We want to know how big that angle is. I'm just going to redraw that. Find it to the nearest degree. So what I might do is I might find out what this angle is, and then I can do 360 minus that. So because that angle is in this triangle here, I can use the cosine rule because that's three sides and one angle. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine of, now remember the angle, sorry, the side opposite this angle, that's C. So that's what we need to subtract. So it doesn't matter what A and B are, matters what c is. So a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab so I'm just going to put this back in that mode. Inverse cosine of about 73 degrees. So the bearing is just 360 minus that, 287 degrees. True. Oscar is building a new granny flat. The project involves different activities labeled A to J. The duration of these activities to completion is given in days on the network diagram below. Which two activities immediately precede activity C? So precede means they come before. So we can see A goes to C, and also B goes to C. So that D there is a dummy. Right? That's a dummy. So A and B. Complete a forward and backward scan of the diagram to determine the earliest and latest starting times for each activity. So we always start off with our um, forward scan from the from the start. Um, so there will be zero there. This one here is. We'll say this one's for G. So this one is 5, because 0 plus 5 is 5. This one here for C, we've got A with 1, but we've got B with 5. So we always have to take the highest number. So even though it only takes one day to finish A, we can't start C yet until we finish B. So the earliest time we can start C is 5 days after we started the project. This one here for E is 5 plus 2, which is 7. This one here is 7 plus 7. This is for activity H. 7 plus 7 is 14. All right up here, 
5 plus 3 is 8. And this one here, we've got three different lines coming to it. So we've got 8 plus 8, which is 16. We've got 5 plus 12, which is 17. And we've got 14 plus 4, which is 18. We have to take the bigger number, 18. And 18 plus 1 is 19. So that's our forward scan, backward scan. We need to start with our finish. It's going to be exactly the same number as what we have here in the early start time. So the latest start time is 19 for the finish. I'm going to work backwards now. I'm going to minus 1. That's going to be 18 here. 18 minus 4 is 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. All right, this one here, we've got 18 minus 8 is 10. Okay, so 18 minus 8, that's 10. We now have 10 minus 3, which is 7. All right, for this one here, we've got um, these two these two lines that are coming out of it. So I'm going to take my 18 and I'm going to minus 12, that's 6. And for this one, I'm going to take my 7 and minus 2, that's my 5. So here we have to take um, well, this one here will have to take 5. Usually we take the bigger number, but that bigger number will actually be for F. So this node here is actually missing um, one of these boxes. So we have a box for F, then F would be 5, 6. But for C, it has to be 5, 5. And then this one here has 2, so 7 minus 5 is 2. Um, 5, minus 5 minus oh, that's not right because this should be 0 oh no this should be 0 0 Okay, oh, okay, again, because this one's missing two boxes. Uh, two boxes. So this one's technically for A. And then this one will have for B. So it's actually missing one, which we don't really need. Okay, so that's it. I'm pretty sure for that one. Sorry if I make any mistakes. Um, and please turn over. That's it for that. Okay, the cost C in dollars of making N phones is shown by the line in the graph below. What's the gradient? So here we can see that All right, so that's forty thousand. Okay, so that tells me that the rise is twenty five thousand and the run is two hundred and fifty, so it's just twenty five thousand divided by two fifty one hundred. What is an a uh, write an equation for the cost of making n phones? So the cost is going to equal to well, my fixed cost is fifteen thousand, but it costs one hundred dollars per phone to make because that's how what our gradient is one hundred n. The income obtained from selling n phones is given by the equation i is equal to two hundred n. Draw the graph of this equation on the above graph. So we know when n is 0, we won't be getting any money because we haven't sold any. But when n is 250, if we sold 250, we would make $50,000. Or we'll earn 50000 So use your ruler. I don't have, uh, let me see if I can use this. All right, 
I need to extend up a little bit. Oh, let's see if I can. There we go. All right. So it goes through there, and this one needs to go through here just to make it as accurate as possible. Yep. Okay. So we can see they intersect at 150. So if this, is there a question about break even point? No, there's no question. So, okay, I'm just gonna erase this little bit here. There we go. Um, and I will just label this i is equal to 200 n, not small n. How many phones would need to be made to make a profit of 15,000? I reckon should say shop, uh, sold. So if a profit of 15,000, well profit is income minus cost. So if we want a profit of 15,000 and the income is 200 N, and the cost is 15,000 plus 100 N. We can now solve this equation. I'm going to add 15,000 to the other side. And now I can now divide by 100. Telling me we need to sell 15. But we need to sell 300 phones in order to make a profit. Right, question 39. A large farm shed has a flat rectangular roof, which is 10 meters by wide by 20 meters long. During a storm, 15 millimeters of rain falls onto the roof in 10 minutes. Rain that falls on the roof drains immediately into a cylindrical rainwater tank with a diameter of 4 meters. Calculate the average rate at which the water level in the tank changes during the storm. Answer in centimeters per minute to one decimal place. Right. Okay, this is the last question. So we've got 10 meters by 20 meters. So let's do this. Let's work out the volume. Alright, so we can say that the volume is of this rectangular roof, length times width times height, is 10 meters by 20 meters by 15 millimeters. Now, 15 millimeters, if we want to convert that into um, meters, we need to divide by 10 to turn it into centimeters and then 100, centi 100 to turn it into meters. So, the volume. is three. So three cubic meters falls onto the roof. That goes into the cylindrical tank. Calculate the average rate at which the water level in the tank changes during the storm. So the water level is this. So I would probably need to work out um, the area of the circle. So area is equal to pi r squared pi times 2 squared because the radius is 2 not 4. Alright that's 4 pi. So well maybe I'll do this instead. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, which is pi times 2 squared times the height. Um, since the volume is 3 cubic meters, I can work out that the height is 3 over 2 squared is 4, so 4 pi. That's how much water will be in the tank after the fifth, 10 minutes, after the 10 minutes of rain. So 3 over 4 pi. Okay, 0 0.2387 meters. 
All right, because the question says answer, uh, find a rate, the average rate, which means we want it per minute, centimeters per minute. So I'm going to convert this into centimeters first by timesing that by 100. And so therefore, the average rate, since it took 10 minutes of rainfall, will be 23.87 divided by 10, 2.387, well it says one decimal place, so I'm just going to round that now, 2.4 centimeters per minute. And that's it. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. If you did, please give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. See you.